You know guys, right here it's 41 degrees, I'm sweating, but here's a hug. Sweaty armpit hug. Have you ever guys been caught out in the cold, the dark, without your phone, without food, without water, and you just need to survive? Have you guys been in that situation? I know I haven't. The closest I've gotten to a near-death experience was literally like two weeks ago when I decided to light up 168 sparklers with a thousand degree knife. These hacks would have not helped at that time because I literally just needed common sense. I'm part of the family yet yeah, here already. I encourage you guys to join. All you need to do is click the subscribe button and you will automatically be entered into my current MacBook Air giveaway. And the only other thing you guys need to do is to be part of my vlog squad, which means subscribe to my vlog channel, and that is linked down below. Good luck, guys, and oh my gosh, let's get this video to 150,000 thumbs up. That would be amazing. Thank you guys so much for taking a few seconds and clicking that. You guys rock. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's go. I love road trips. Who's with me? <sighs> but I hate it when the car breaks down, especially in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Oh great, my phone's dead as well. Now what do I do? I'm totally stranded. Did you know that you can charge your phone with a car charger and a 9 volt battery and some house keys? It's actually quite simple. Just touch one side of the battery with the end of the car charger and the other side with the end of the key. Then press the key so that it touches the metallic part of the side of the charger. You can see that when I do this, the blue light on the charger turns on. This made me so excited when I saw this for the first time. So secure the key onto the side and plug your charger cord into the charger and your phone. Connect your circuit and voila, you have power. Will you run away? Will you run away? In case of emergencies, I now keep a 9 volt battery in the car. With this, I can charge my phone for long enough to make a phone call and get help. Desperate times calls for desperate measures, right? Dehydration is a huge problem, so finding a source of drinking water is often the first priority for survival. If all you can find is a dirty creek, then you may not have any option, but there's a way to filter the water first. All you need are two containers and a piece of cloth. You may even want to use the shirt on your back if you have nothing else, and who knows, you may create this cool new fashion statement. Oh, jump on the roller coasters. Fill up one container with the dirty water and place it on something elevated. Place the empty clean container next to it and connect the bottles with a piece of cloth. This might take a while to get going, but once it starts, it's actually pretty fast. The cloth will basically absorb and filter the clean water and transfer it into the clean container with the help of gravity. And a unicorn, like Miss Wackanoodle. After a while, you will have a clean container of water. Don't drink this immediately because there might still be bacteria in it because this filter only cleans out debris. The best thing is to quickly boil it before drinking it, but at least it will be clean when you do. Rain is often the safest source of clean drinking water, but catching it can be pretty challenging and using your mouth is not very efficient. But kind of fun. But you can turn a plastic bottle into a very efficient rainwater collector. Just cut the end of the bottle. And then cut four flaps on the sides of the bottle. Bend each of them at the base to fan them out, and now you have your own rainwater catcher. 
Place another container underneath the opening and wait for your delicious drinking water to fill up. This works so well by taking a leaf <laughs> get it, out of nature's book by copying the way a lot of plants collect rainwater. By fanning out the petals, you increase the surface area which rain is collected. Have you ever wanted to get some food only to realize you've left your wallet or purse at home? This is the worst, especially when you're hungry. But to ensure this never happens again, just take out your phone case and fold up a $20 or $50 note inside it. Don't use it unless you absolutely have to. If you get lost or separated from your group during an excursion or outing, this extra bit of cash might save your life. Especially smoke can be extremely dangerous in fires and other disasters. But for us girls out there, we're actually carrying an emergency mask already. That's it, it's your bra. As weird as it sounds, it actually fits your face pretty well and even has straps so you can free up your hands for other things. Obviously, this is not a proper mask, so make sure you get out of danger as quickly as possible and it's okay to look a bit silly at times like this. <laughs> imagination goes a little crazy but I gotta save my unicorn family you know fam comes first like you guys if you're lost in the wild hunger is definitely gonna be a problem eventually but you won't die from starvation for up to a whole month the biggest problem you face is the cold especially at night trouble starting a fire due to rain or humidity, sometimes the best kindling is to use your own food. Doritos and many other kinds of chips make for great kindling and as you can see, they can burn extremely well even in the windiest of conditions. There's no point holding onto your food supplies if you're not going to be around long enough to eat them, right? Actually, that sounds kind of morbid. So let's move on. have a lighter or a match to start a fire. Well did you know that you can make a fire out of a water bottle or even a sandwich bag? This actually blew my mind but as you can see it is possible. Basically you want to use the curved part of the water bottle like a magnifying glass or you can fill up a sandwich bag with water and make a shape like this. Kind of like you're decorating a cake. Then basically focus the brightest part of the beam onto any piece of scrap paper, move the bottle back and forth until the beam is the most concentrated and just leave it there. You may need some patience for this part, it really tested hours. As you can see, after 5 minutes, you can already see some smoke rising from the paper and if you take a look, you'll notice that the black writing has slightly burnt and there are burn marks on the back to prove it. So just keep at it and you'll eventually succeed. Once you see more smoke, add extra pieces of paper to it and it should catch on fire all by itself on a windy day. If there's no wind, you may need to blow on the smoke to start the fire. Pretty cool, right? We're so dysfunctional, but still inseparable, but never get anywhere. The Heimlich maneuver has been used countless times to save a choking person from certain death. But unfortunately, this didn't happen today. Rest in peace, me.
the other me. around you can actually perform the maneuver on yourself. Find the midpoint between your ribcage or your navel and place a fist there. Then cup your fist with your other hand and forcefully push inwards and upwards to try and dislodge your food. If this doesn't work, keep this position and find a table or chair roughly waist height. Then fall down hard onto your hands and this should generate enough force to expel whatever you are choking on. The key thing is not to panic. and all the trees look the same, then you're probably in big trouble. But if you know that if a group or civilization is in a certain direction like north, you can actually find it by making your own compass. All you need is a needle, which you may have brought along in a sewing pack that you may have stolen from a hotel. Fill up any container with water and find a small leaf that you can float on the water. If you have a magnet, even better, but if you don't, you can actually magnetize your needle by rubbing it onto your clothes. Just rub it in one direction about a hundred times and that will generate enough static to magnetize your needle. Then place it carefully on top of the leaf. The needle will stay afloat and because we magnetized it earlier, the point will slowly turn to face north. As you can see this actually works and even when you move the needle off north, it slowly finds its way back proving that this hack is amazing. Obviously something we need to have in order to survive, but sometimes catching it is not quite as easy as it seems. Even the smallest of creatures can be far too agile for humans to catch. Especially me. Gotta get over myself, this can't be fair, well I've got to at least try. In order to make your own spear shooter, you need a plastic bottle, a balloon, or any elastic material, and a sharp stick. You probably need to sharpen down a straight branch, but I just use a skewer for demonstration. Cut the top of the bottle off and put a balloon around one end. Place your spear inside the balloon, pull back, aim and fire! You'll probably need to practice with this to get your aim right, but if you're lucky, you might hit your target. In fact, I hit mine after two goes, so this is pretty cool. Next step is to practice on moving targets. Just kidding, I would never hurt you Mia. Be careful if you're using this around other people though because this could seriously injure someone. And just a reminder guys, this is not a toy. Oh my god, I love lazy nights where I can sit around, watch Netflix, scroll on Facebook and... Wait, what was that? Oh well. It's high and low and in between. And I am glad Wait, so Alex had a baby with Selena, but Selena was actually his mother's sister? Yeah, it's no secret. don't have any backup candles or flashlights, did you know that a crayon can burn for up to 30 minutes? Just use a lighter and melt the top part of the wax first. Then the paper should catch on fire. This kind of works like a reverse candle with the wick on the outside and the crayons are basically just wax anyways, so it's no surprise that this works so well. If you want, you can also drip the first few drops of the wax onto a flat surface and use that as you hold your crayon candle upright. That way you can move it around with you wherever you go like a lantern and it won't fall over. This is a great emergency hack that might just help you get through an otherwise pitch black evening. So you can go back to your next
power goes out, sometimes it's hard to tell whether it's just your house or everyone else's house in the area. I'll usually just look outside to see if there's any other lights on in the neighborhood, but an easier way is just to take out your phone and check for other Wi-Fi networks. If you find that the usual networks around you are still on, then it's probably just your house. But if you see nothing, then it's probably your whole area. And all you can do is just chill until it gets fixed. pinch and need an emergency flashlight, the worst thing is realizing that you don't have enough batteries for it. But as long as you have one working battery, you can hack your way out with some aluminium foil. Just tear off a strip of foil and measure out the length of your battery. Then fold the foil over on itself until it matches the length of the battery. Then roll the foil tightly along its length until you make a tight cylinder shape. It should be roughly the same height as your missing battery and it doesn't matter if it isn't as wide, it'll still work just fine. Next put your batteries in along with your foil to replace what you're missing and close the lid. You'll find that you now have a working torch. This hack works for everything, not just torches. So make sure you remember it because you never know when it can get you out of a tricky situation. Have you ever walked down an alleyway or through a car park and felt unsafe? Like someone was watching you or following you and the hairs of your neck literally stand up. If this happens, take out your keys and push each key out through each gap between your fingers. Kind of like a brass knuckle. If someone is actually there, you can turn on them with a surprise attack. <laughs> Under the effects of adrenaline, you never know what you might be capable of. However, only do this if you're actually getting assaulted. If you're getting robbed, the best thing to do is just to drop your purse and run away. The robber will be too busy picking up your money, then chasing after you. Let it rain dollar dollar bills. So I hope you guys learned something new today, and if you guys did, don't forget to try it out and hashtag me on Widgie Comments because I love hanging out with you guys during the week, liking your photos, seeing what you're up to, and chilling with you guys. And until next week, I'm gonna wish you guys so much. Until then, I'll see you guys on my social media, my vlog, and things like that. And yeah, bye! Love you!